Unit 1, Topic 4, um, Simplifying Exponential Expressions. Um, let's go through a couple of examples. So here's an example from that homework assignment. We have negative 4x to the 4th over y to the 4th times 2x cubed y squared. First, let's go ahead and get this expression or this term um, into like one level. Instead of having that division bar and have a numerator and denominator, let's go ahead and put it all together. Remember, when we have y to the fourth on the bottom or y over y to the fourth, that's the same thing as just saying y to the negative fourth. Remember, that negative is just saying let's put this whole thing on the bottom. So, in other words, if we were to simplify this term, that would be the same thing as saying negative 4x to the fourth, y to the negative fourth. All right? Now we're going to multiply that by 2x to the third, y squared. So now we just need to multiply these two things. And it's a little easier to multiply now that we've got them all in the same, um, like in the numerator, basically. So first we're going to multiply the numbers, right? So that equals negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Then we look at the terms, right? We have an X, or excuse me, the variables. We have an X and an X. So and when we multiply two variables, if we have X to the fourth times X to the third, that's the same thing as X to the 4 plus 3 or, excuse me, plus or x to the seventh, right? So that means when we're multiplying those variables, we have x to the fourth times x to the third, that gives us x to the seventh. Now we have, let's look at our y variables. Okay, so now we have y to the negative fourth times y squared, which is the same as y to the negative four plus two. Negative four plus two is negative two, y to the negative two, so that means we would have, when we multiply that, we have negative x to the seventh times y to the negative two. Now, should we leave that with a negative exponent? Oh, um, probably not, right? We're going to move it down to the bottom. So that means that we have negative 8x to the seventh all over y squared. So that's how you simplify that one. Let's look at another example. Okay, here's one where we have, um, similar to one of the ones I was looking at yesterday, um, we have P to the negative third, Q to the negative one over R to the fourth, all raised to the negative four power. Again, a common mistake here is just to multiply negative four through, as if you're saying negative four times this. That is not what we're doing. This is the same thing as saying, I'm just going to show you, just to remind everybody, this is the same thing as p to the negative third, q to the negative one over r to the fourth. Well, um, basically, shoot, this is not the right way to show it, because we're, we're, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get rid of this, and I'll show you guys in a minute. This is saying we're multiplying this entire term negative four times, or taking the reciprocal and then multiplying it four times. But what we're going to do first um, we're going to go ahead and put this term all on one level, just like we did last time, right? So that means we have p to the negative third, q to the negative one, and r to the negative fourth. Remember, when you have one over r to the fourth, that's the same thing as saying r to the negative fourth. Okay, so that's why we can go from here to here. Okay. Now remember, we're raising that whole thing to negative four. Now, when we were multiplying like x to the 2 and times x to the 4th, we add it, right? We had x to the 2 plus 4 equals x to the 6th. But now in this case, we're raising it to a power. So let's say we just had x squared all to the 3rd power. Now we're multiplying x to 2 times 3, which is x to the 6th, instead of just adding it, okay? So, in this case, we're going to say this is, we're going to start down here, p, we're going to say negative 3 times negative 4, q, negative 1 times negative 4, and r, negative 4 times negative 4. So if we were to multiply all those out, we get p to the 12th, oops, q to the 4th, and r to the 16th. 
And those are all positive, so that would be our final answer. Now, another way to do this, and this might be too complicated, so if it is, just to visualize, I want to show you what we're looking at and why this is our answer. So when we have p to the negative third, and this is confusing for you, ignore it. Using that last method I did was just fine, but this is for anyone who wants to see another way or like kind of what we're doing. So here, this is to the negative fourth. Remember, when we say anything is to a negative power, we're taking the reciprocal. So if you want to switch it to a positive exponent, you just take the reciprocal. So this is the same thing as saying r to the fourth over q to the negative third, q to the neg oh, that's a p. p to the negative third, q to the negative four, all to the fourth power. Right? So, so we're just taking that reciprocal. And then this is the same thing as saying, I'm just going to illustrate it. This is what I was trying to show a minute ago. R to the fourth over P to the negative third, Q to the negative one times R to the fourth over P to the negative three. And this is why we do these processes, right? R to the fourth over P to the negative third, Q to the negative one. This is what we're doing. We're actually multiplying this out four times because we're dealing with an exponent, right? That's what we're doing. That's just so you understand it, but we don't need to do all that. The shortcut is, let me just erase all this. So if we were in class, I would just be using my hand to wipe off the whiteboard. Okay, so the way to do this is to multiply the exponent. So here we would have r to the four times four, which is 16, over p to the negative three times four, which is p to the negative 12th. And then we have q, negative one times four, Four, which is negative fourth. Now when we move those exponents because they're negative we would move them to the top that would give us r to the 16th, p to the 12th, and q to the fourth which is exactly what we got just a minute ago. Well different order but same answer. So just so you know that's how it works if you want to take a shortcut but if that part is confusing which I can completely understand just go ahead and put them all on the same level and then raise it to the power like we did in the first part. All right. So that's a couple of examples on how to simplify those exponential expressions. If you have any questions about that, let me know.